In this video, we will see how we can construct a binary tree from a given in order and post order traversal. So the goal is given in order and post order traversal, we have to construct a binary tree. So as we know that in order is left, root and right. So first we visit the left subtree, then we visit the root and at the last we visit the right subtree. And post order is left, right and then root. So in the post order traversal, the last node gives us the root of the tree. So in this example, A is the root of the tree. So using these in order and post order properties, we have to construct this binary tree. So the intuitive logic is we traverse the post order from the right side. We pick each of the nodes. So first we pick A, so A will be the root of the tree. Then we search this A node in the in order traversal. And all the nodes which are on the left of A, these will be the left subtree and the nodes on the right will be part of the right subtree. So if we draw this in the tree, the left subtree is H, D, P and L and the right subtree is Z, C and E. In the next step, we pick the next node in the post order traversal. So this node is Z. So Z is part of the right subtree which was Z, C and E. So left of Z is null and right of Z is CE. So we can break this further. Z is the root node and we further split it into C and E. Then we pick the next node in the post order traversal, which is C. So C is part of the CE subtree. So here left of C is null and right of C is E. So we can further split this. Then we pick the next node in the post order traversal, which is E. So E is a child node and it is the only node in the subtree. So there is no need to break it down. Then we pick the next node in the post order traversal, which is D. So D is part of the subtree H, D, P, L. So left of D is H and right of D is P, L. So we can further split it. Then we pick the next node in the post order traversal, which is L. L is part of the P and L subtree. So left of L is P, and right of L is null. So if we split this further, it will give us this subtree. So left of L is P, the right of L is null. So in this manner, we can create a binary tree from a given in order and post order traversal. So we just have to visit the post order in the reverse direction, and then we have to search that node in the in order traversal. Left of that node will be the left subtree, and right of that node will be the right subtree. So we'll keep doing this for all of the nodes in the post order traversal and that will give us the resultant binary tree. So now this can be done both recursively and iteratively. Here we'll focus on the recursive approach. So now let's have a look at the pseudo code. So here we are checking the recursive method. So we are given these two traversals in order and post order and these are the indices. So the first step of the pseudo code is we have to keep a variable post index which will be equal to the size of the post order array minus one. So size of this array is eight. So the post index is seven. So post index will be used to traverse the post order array. So as we will traverse the post order array from reverse. So the post index will point to the last element, which is a. Then we have this function construct, which takes two parameters in start and in end. So these in start and in end are the indices for the in order traversal. So the first function called to this construct function will be for in start 0 and in end 7. So we'll give the first index of the in order array and the last index. So 0 is the first index and 7 is the last index. So the first function call is construct 0 comma 7. Then we check if start is greater than end. So this is false. Then we create a new tree node of the seventh index of the post order array. So seventh index is a. So the node will be pointing to A. So let's create a new node. Then we decrement the post index. So the post index will be six. We check if start is equal to end. And then we search A in the in order traversal. So the index of A in the in order traversal is four. So in index becomes four. And then we call construct for the node of right. And the parameters are five and seven. So here node is a and in index is 4. So from here we are calling construct for 5 comma 7. So now for this call in start is 5 
and in end is 7. We check if start is greater than end and then we create a new tree node with the 6th index of the post order array. So 6th index is z so we create a new tree node and then we decrement the post index so it becomes 5. We check if start is equal to end and then we search z in the in order traversal. So the index of z is 5 so the value of in index variable is 5. Then we call this construct function with the values 6 comma 7. So here node was z and the in index was 5. So the parameters now are 6 comma 7. We check if start is greater than end and then we create a new tree node with the fifth index of the post order array. So the fifth index of the post order array is c. So node becomes c. We create a new tree node and we decrement the post index. So it becomes 4. And then we search c in the in order traversal. So the index is 6. We call this construct function with the parameters 7 comma 7. So from here we are calling construct 7 comma 7. And here the node was c and in index was 6. So now the parameters are 7 comma 7. We check if start is greater than end and then we create a new tree node with the fourth index of the post order array. So the fourth index is e. So we create a new tree node with the value e. We decrement the post index so it becomes 3. We check if start is equal to end. So now both are equal to 7 so we are returning e. So this function call construct 7 comma 7 returns and the control goes to construct 6 comma 7 where the node was c. So node was c and this function returned e. So right of c becomes e. So we will link c to e. And then we call for the left of c. So start was 6 and in index was 6. So the second parameter is 5. So from construct 6 comma 7 we are calling construct 6 comma 5. So in start is 6 and in end is 5. We check this if condition if start is greater than end we return null. So this function call returns with null. Control goes back to construct 6 comma 7 and from here we are returning the value of node. So this function returns c. Control goes back to construct 5 comma 7 where the node value was z. So the node was z and the construct 6 comma 7 returned c. So right of z becomes c. So we will link these nodes. And then we call for the left of z construct 5 comma 4. So from here we are calling construct 5 comma 4. So the in start is 5 and in end is 4. So here we check if start is greater than end. So we return null. So this function call returns null. So now this function call also ends and the control goes back to construct 0 comma 7. Here the node value was a and this construct call returns z. So right of a becomes z. So we will link these nodes. And then we call for the left of a. The in start is 0 and in index is 4. So the second parameter is 3. So from construct 0 comma 7 we call construct 0 comma 3. So the in start is 0 now and in end is 3. We come here we create a new tree node with the third index of the post order array. So the third index is D. So we create a new tree node with the value D. We decrement the post index. So the post index is now 2. We check if start is equal to end. And then we find the index of D in the in order traversal. So the index of D is 1. So for the right of D we call this function construct with the parameters 2 comma 3. So from here we are calling construct 2 comma 3. So here the node was D and the in index was 1. So in this call in start is 2 and in end is 3. We come here now we create a new tree node with the second index of the post order array. So second index is L so we create a new tree node with the value L. We decrement the post index so 
it becomes one we check a start is equal to end and then we search the value of l in the in order traversal so l is at index 3 and then we call for the right of l this construct function with the parameters 4 comma 3 so from here we'll call construct 4 comma 3 here the node value was l and in index was 3 so in the next call in start is 4 and in end is 3 we check the if condition so start is greater than end so we return null from here so this function call returns null so right of l returns null so now we call for the left of l construct and in start is 2 and in index was 3 so second parameter is also 2 so from here we are calling construct 2 comma 2 in start is 2 and in end is also 2 now here we create a new tree node with the first index of the post order array first index is p so we create a new tree node with the value p we decrement the post index so it becomes 0 we check a start is equal to end so these are equal so we return node so here we are returning p so this function call returns p so node was l and this function call returned p so left of l is p and now this function called terminates so the control goes back to d so the construct 2 comma 3 call returned l so right of d will become l so we will link this node and then we'll call this function for the left of d so in start will be 0 and in index is also 0 so from here we'll call construct 0 comma 0 so now both these parameters are 0 we create a new tree node with the 0th index of the post order array so 0th index is h so we create a new node with the value h we decrement the post index so it becomes minus 1 if start and end are same we return the value of node so we return h so this construct 0 comma 0 call returned h so this function call returned h so the left of d is now h so we will link these nodes so now this construct 0 comma 3 call is also done so the control goes back to the main function and from here it will return d so at this point the node was a so the left of a is now d so we'll link this node so now the recursion terminates and this is the binary tree that we have obtained from these in order and post order traversal so by simply drawing the recursion tree you can visualize how a recursive program is running so the branches in the recursion tree determines how the recursion was performed so here the first recursive call was made for the right of the node and here the second recursive call was made if we look at the time complexity of this program the time complexity is order of n square it is because of this part where we are searching the index of the node in the in order traversal so at every step we are doing a search so this search operation is expensive so that makes the time complexity of the entire program to be order of n square now there is a small optimization that we can do here let's see what is that optimization so the optimization is we'll create a map which will efficiently store the in order index so in a value to index map we have created in this map for the in order entries we have stored the indices so the h values map to the 0th location d to 1 similarly we have stored all the values with their corresponding indices so in this step where we have to find the value of the node in the in order traversal we can simply refer to this map and find out the index so if the node was z we will simply refer to this map and we will find the index to be 5 so instead of searching the entire array we will simply refer to this value to index map that we have created so the time complexity of this step will be order of 1 and the time complexity of the entire algorithm will come down to order of n so by doing this small optimization we have reduced the time complexity to order of n now once we have understood how we can construct a tree using the in order and post order traversal let's see the implementation so all the source code that i'll be showing is available in my github repository link of that is available here and as well as in the description now let's have a look at the code so in the main function i have these two vectors in which i have stored the in order and the post order traversals then i create this in order map which is a value to index map where i store the values and the corresponding indices 
there are this function construct tree in which I pass these two arrays, this in order map and a variable post index, which is pointing to the last element of the post order array. In this function construct tree, I check if start is greater than end. Then I create a new tree node with value post index of the post order array. So initially post index is pointing to the last element. So here basically I'm creating the root node because we are traversing from the reverse. So I'm decrementing the post index. I check if start is equal to end. If that is the case, I will return the node. Otherwise, I will search in the map the index of this node. Once I get this index, I will call this function constructor recursively and the starting index will be the post index and the last index will be in index plus one. And then I call this function for the left subtree with the parameters in start and in index minus one. So this recursion will keep on going until we have processed all the nodes of the post order traversal. So once this is done, we'll return the root node. So in the main function, we'll get the root node. And then I pass this root node to the in order and the post order traversal. So I'm printing the in order and the post order traversal of the constructed tree to check if these traversals match what was given to us. If these match, that means we have constructed the correct tree because for a given in order and post order traversal, only a unique tree can be there. So let's see the output of this program. So the tree has been constructed and the in order traversal is HTPLAZCE and the post order is HPLDECZA. So these traversal match what was given to us. So the tree has been accurately constructed. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.